Rahman Rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakuluhu kufuwan ahad. Say, he is Allah, the uniquely one, the eternal. He is not the father of anything. He's not the son of anything. He doesn't compare to anything. And he's unique. One. I had. Said, wow. That sounds like what I believe anyway. Okay, we can go with that. Now along the way through all of this, all of us are having our own questions and our own discussions individually with this man from Egypt. The Catholic priest Ask him one day, can I go to your church with you? His temple, his mosque. He said, sure, come on. They were gone for a while. They got back a little later. We took the priest aside and we said, did you go in there? Yeah. Did you see them? Yeah. What do they do? <laughs> do they like slaughter little animals or anything like that or, you know? He said, no, actually, uh, they stand there like monks do. Uh, you know, in monks in a monastery, they stand for hours praying. He said, that's what they do. They just stand there and pray. And then they bow, and they do something that only the high priest gets to do, which is to put a sajda, or prostration. I said, really? He said, yeah. Uh, and then what? And then they leave. That's it? Yeah. Okay. What kind of music do they have? So they don't have any music. How in the world do you worship God without music? I was a music minister. Hello. So I went to my friend from Egypt. I said, excuse me. Is it true you guys don't have any music in your mosques? He said, that's true. How many mosques are in the world? He said, millions. I said, millions. Hmm. They all have electricity? He said, yeah. Hmm. Because I sell electric pianos, organs. I was thinking, hmm. We could go by. I could get rich. This is a good idea. Do you think they'd be interested in any music? He said, you could try. <laughs> but I doubt it. <laughs> you boy. <laughs> See, he didn't want to make anything just like Haram, haram, haram. Just let you get in the door. First thing for first. La ilaha illallah. And he kept that first no matter what we brought up. No matter what was the subject. He get it back to la ilaha illallah. A few days more go by. The Catholic priest says, can I go again with you? He said, sure. He said, I found such peace there. I just want to go there again and feel that feeling again. So they left, and they didn't come back. They didn't come back. And it was so late at night, and they finally, finally drove up the old country road out there. And when they got out of the car, right away I recognized the Muslim, you know. But who was this guy with him? Had on a white kufiya, a long white robe. Said, That's the priest? <laughs> what happened to you? Pete, did you become a Muslim? <laughs> he said, Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah. He said, O Muhammad Rasulullah. I was shocked. I considered this to be the biggest part of the story because this man had dedicated his entire life to the Lord. He had completely given up all worldly things so that he could be a priest. He could not get married. He could not have children. He cannot do this and that and so and so. They don't even gamble. They don't do, they don't do anything. They just pray. So, wow. You're giving all that up? He said, I'm giving up nothing. I'm gaining. I'm going, really? He said, this is the right way. 
He said, I know it is. He said, let me get my cameras out. We used to have a television show. I get my camera out, set it on a tripod, get the lights hooked up, put the microphones in. You guys know how long that takes. We get it all together. Guess what? <laughs> the priest was asleep. <laughs> so, well. So I went upstairs. I want to tell my wife. I'm still excited. I can't believe it. A priest entered Islam today. Can you believe that? A priest, a Catholic priest became a Muslim, I'm telling her. She said, I want to get a divorce. I go, huh? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is a different subject here. What happened? She said, I've had it. I've been listening, talking. We were thinking about what's going on around here. I see where you're going. I know where I want to go. And I said, and a Muslim cannot be married to a Christian. We heard him say that. A Muslim can't be married to a Christian, so I want a divorce. I said, I'm not going to become no Muslim. Take it easy. Uh, did I say I want to be one of them guys? No, I didn't say that. Farthest thing from my mind, forget about that. Let's go back to normal. And besides, he said that a Christian woman couldn't be married to a Muslim. A, a Muslim a woman can't be married to a Christian man, you see. So if I became a Muslim, it would be all right for you to be a Christian. It's just that a Muslim woman can't be married to the Christian or Jew or anything else. She said, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I want to become a Muslim. <laughs> okay, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> okay, it's time to go into a save mode. There's what's called plan B. <clears throat> By the way, there's some good news here. I too would like to be a Muslim. She said, what? I said, no, really. I wanted to, but I didn't know how to tell you, so I also want to be a Muslim. So that's it, okay? She said, I don't believe you. I said, no, I, I, really, I, I just didn't know how to tell you. I didn't know what to say in front of dad, but hey, you know, now that it's all out, I'm ready to be a Muslim. Da, 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 da. She said, you're a liar. I said, how can you say that? She said, you're either lying right now or you were lying five minutes ago when you said you didn't want to be a Muslim. Mm, got me there, all right. <laughs> yep, that's pretty true. <laughs> she said, get out. Well, that's that, you know. I'm, I'm going down the steps and I'm thinking, you know, all my life, everything is just flashing in front of me. My wife, my kids, my... Wait a minute, this is my father's house. How am I getting thrown out of here? <laughs> so I go down. I wake up my friend from Egypt. I said, come outside. You and me, we got to talk. He said, what's the matter? I said, we got to go outside. Oh, yeah. We go outside. And I begin to tell him my whole life story, everything. I don't know why I had to talk to somebody. So we walked up and down those country roads until the sun started to rise for Fajr. He was so patient. He listened so intently. And by the way, that wasn't the only time. This man was always ready to listen to my problems long after I got into Islam. But on this particular occasion, I really needed him to listen. As the sun started to rise and we saw the first little bit of orange, I told him, you better go pray your fudger and I got to figure out what to do. So I snuck off by myself. I found a big piece of board with a shelter over it and I put it down. There's something in the Bible about making a booth to pray to the Lord, okay? I don't know if you knew about that. It's called the booth. And they set it up. I tried to face it toward what I figure is the east about the direction he's aiming himself. And I put my head on the ground because I said if it works for those Muslim guys, maybe it'll work for me. And with my head on the ground, I said these words only. Oh God, if you're there, guide me. And when I raised up my head, I understood everything. It was in me where the problem was. It's not out there. It's in here. 
And not until you begin to deal with this in here will you ever be able to get right with what's out here. Because when this is not right, your connection to him is not right. And when that's not right, ain't nothing right. I think he was initially fascinated with the religion itself before all this, even despite lacking knowledge. And to see his Catholic friend What's it, convert? Mm -hmm. Converting to Muslim. Yeah, also maybe inspired him somehow. Sometimes you know that that's where you want to go, but you don't want to admit it to yourself or to the people around you because you don't know how they, they'll react. But even despite that, after spending the entire night speaking to the Egyptian guy, he, he himself says he knelt down after creating some sort of booth to communicate. So, I don't know, as much as he was asking or giving these facts of the yolk, the egg, the elephant, whatever the case is, I feel like he knew somehow that maybe there was more to life than what Christianity had taught him. Your thoughts? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I've just realized that lo lo lots of people are converting to Muslim. Uh, maybe they find peace in Islam and they find that um, uh, no complications like the way maybe the way Christianity is and the way the Bible is set up and whatnot. To be honest, if you read the Bible, yeah, it, you might you come across a lot of bloodshed and whatnot. You understand? You even think about it: is the God of the Bible really merciful? You understand? Because there are so many things in the Bible that... He also spoke about how someone is getting punished for your sins. Yeah, like yeah, like you get punished for your sins. You sacrifice your own son and... You know, Although like... Although don't you think like, that happens in certain homes? Why your younger siblings do something but they blame you? Imagine God telling you to sacrifice your son. Will you do that? But again, when Isaac went and... Was it Isaac or was it Abraham or Isaac? Yes, when Abraham wanted to sacrifice his son, then God said no. Then he presented the sheep to him. Do you know the story, yeah? So, um, I mean, why would God even test, I mean, or say that to a human to sacrifice? Is that God really merciful? Is he, is he really wanting? Uh, I don't know, you understand? So such kind of complications that makes people think twice about this type of religion and finding themselves into a religion where they only speak truth and it's, it's of pureness and all this kind of stuff, you understand? That's why lots of people are trying to convert into Islam, which it's a good thing for them. It's, it, it's a really good thing. But towards the end of this video, I like what he said that um, it's, I mean, you have to deal with yourself first before you even go to God. You understand? It's just like saying it all, I mean, the only way out is within. So it all starts with you first. You have to come to terms and condition that you know what this is what I want for myself you know because some people are just there uh, having what we call the blind faith maybe just following things you understand it, is, it, it did not come from your heart just because someone is telling you to do so you just go there blindly without even consulting yourself first Again, my point. So I feel like it all starts with us, and the only way out is within. <laughs> yeah. So you know what I'm saying. Well, something else that was spoken about how Christianity doesn't require you to do the most. You're not covering your hair. You're not. Yeah. Growing a beard. That's it's what like it's the easiest, the easiest religion. Yeah. I feel like it's sometimes it's just like Christianity is no restrictions. You're just out there doing your thing. You don't Free. care. You can go sin. You can do whatever. But on Sunday, you go to church and say, forgive me, Lord. 
and stand up. One night you pray. Yeah, and your sins are all forgiven. But that's what the Bible says, you know. You, uh, how many times did 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 um, did David sin, and God forgive him? A lot of times. So, I mean, with that type of knowledge, people just do whatever they feel like they want to do because our God listens and He will always forgive our uh, his, his own children. But it doesn't mean that now that she, the God can't forgive, He end up sinning every time. Again, my point. I feel like there should be like. A way of a jurisdiction that is followed or maybe a law just like the way is the law of nature you know how the animals behave you now today if you attack Lynn's children or maybe you attack maybe there's a there's a chicken who was small who was hand and whatnot is it hands or chicks chicks if you attack it to so come and attack you back, yeah. they understand. It. But uh, but again, you find that uh, in the Bible, when Jesus was slapped, he turned another chicken. Then, I mean, no, but that could mean a lot of things. So. Exactly, but I I one thing I I know it can mean a lot of things, but why should it mean a lot of things? Why can't we have something that is straightforward? So what do you want it to mean? I mean, if someone oh, slaps, what did you, what you want? <laughs> the law of nature. If you slap me, I will slap you back. That's what you want? I mean, come on. You, you can't come to my house and slap me. What if it's in the and street? I don't that's, not, that's not your house. If you slap me on the street, I'll find you and slap you back. <laughs> <laughs> that's the law of nature. If today you go uh, attack an animal, that animal is going to attack you back. You get my point? So, there's so many things that it's not actually relatable to real life situations and whatnot. But anyway. It's 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 a long story. I mean, if we start talking about these kind of things anyway. But I feel like, man, I, I don't know. It's just tough. It's just tough. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Share to your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And we'll see you in our next reaction video. Deuces.